It's Dr. Alex Earl, and we're here at Pure Plastic Surgery today, and it's Hump Day uh, with Dr. Alex Earl. We got a very special Hump Day here today because we have a guest uh, who also happens to be one of our patients. Uh, she's doing great. She's awesome. Uh, she's about five mo months uh, post-op now, and so let me try to see if we can get her on. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna press that there. And her on and uh hopefully that will come on pretty quickly all right so we're doing it uh, a little bit different today we're doing it selfie style can uh, you hear me and yeah we can hear okay. you all right well now all we see is a door though but we can hear yeah you. I'm, I'm coming <laughs> <laughs> all right but that's great so she's on we can hear her um so as you know, uh, uh, she is one of my or one of our BBL patients. Um, she's approximately um, five months uh, post-op now, uh, pretty close to five months, um, and and she's um, she's done awesome. She's done great. She's got some. Uh, hey, there you are. All right, and um, and she also has you know some some you know, a lot of recommendations in terms of post-op care. Uh, as well. So I don't really want to kind of uh, monopolize the conversation um, here today because I want uh, to give uh, Felicia here a chance to, to be the star for the show for today. Um, so the way I think we're going to work it out is that uh, maybe we'll start with a few questions which they have sent in for us, but I'm hoping some of the ladies here on the live can then also uh, start asking a few questions um, as well. Um, and you know you can make them mostly for Felicia, but uh, of course, if you want me to answer something, I, I can jump in at any time. So, how you doing? I'm doing great. Um, so, some of the questions that I got was, um, I'll start with this one. Does it move? Because I've never heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, this is. So it does move. All right. It's not like. Um, stuffed or anything <laughs> good um, and how, and how long did that take because as, as you know for, for the most part when you first get a bbl things can feel pretty hard you know they they're not really moving much so for for you um how long do you feel it took for for things to become you know a bit softer uh, uh and more more with more jiggly i guess for me it still gets softer as the time goes by but i would say maybe Two months. I'll give it two months. Okay. Be before, like, all the hardness, the swelling started to subside. All right. Great. So, yeah, I, I, I think I agree with that. It's probably, it probably takes at least two months, at least two months for, for things to soften up. All right. All right. Do you have, do you have the next one there? Um, how do you feel about the elastic band compression method? Okay. So, I, mm -hmm. you go ahead. No, so yeah, so I think that's a great question. I know that's something that you, you've been fairly active about. Um, so you've done kind of the, the elastic uh, band or ACE band uh, method for compression. Um, so yeah, what, why don't you explain to, uh, to the ladies, you know, what that is? How did you, how did you find out about it? How did you get into it? And, and, and then some of your tips as to how to do it uh, well. Um, I found out about it from a previous surgery sister. Um, her name was Brenda. She, she was doing it after her surgery. And I was like, I want to do that. I don't want to do the Faha. I did try the Faha, um, in Miami and I felt like it gave me a yeast. Okay. It was just so close up there. And then when I came home, I, I brought another one that said no hips, um, no butt compression, but I put it on for like an hour or maybe two. And I saw my hips going down. So I was like, I'm not wearing Fahas ever. So I started, I, well, I didn't start the ace bandage. I think it's been around for years. Um, yes. So I started with the ace bandage and I did, okay, so let me just, so this is what I wear every day now. I have this one and I have another one that has, um, that compresses me more. This one I need to get altered. Whew, 
that felt great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So this is me, no faha, no um compression or anything. All right. And to put okay, what I will say with this ace bandage thing, um, and the compression. I did start the ace bandage day six. But I didn't start the waist cincher until six weeks because I didn't want to get fibrosis. I heard if I started too early, it can probably give me fibrosis. So I didn't do that. So what I did instead, I did an eighth. I basically was like, this was my method up until week six. All right. So th those are some good points. Uh, and I just want to, you know, want to make sure that that's clear. So, um, you know, initially you do want to start with kind of your, your stage one uh, Faha, which is the one you kind of come out of surgery with. Um, and, and that you want to wear, you know, for the first, you know, at least couple of weeks or so. And then, you know, around, around the, you know, the period of time where you would be moving to a stage two Faha, then you, that's when you have the choice of either moving to your stage two Faha or doing something like the ace Spanish method that, um, that's being shown right now. Um, and then, yeah, certainly for like the, 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 the strong compression, the waist trainers, um, you want to wait um, at least uh, eight weeks for those. And like, and like she mentioned, if you do that too soon, it can become an issue because it can lead to fibrosis and issues with the skin uh, and, you know, over compression, you know, too, too early. All right. So, yeah, go ahead. And so you, this is what you started with at, at around week two or so, correct? Um, from day six. Are they safe? Okay. So I have on an ace bandage yeah. and then I have this lipo 360 foam because the white ones it move around so much that it wasn't comfortable. So I got the wraparound from Amazon. All right. And, and that was probably a little bit easier for you to hold in place when you're doing this. Without by yourself. someone helping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you can make it as tight as you guys like. I say go by what your body tells you. And then it was like this. And then I wore this. And this was all I wore for five weeks straight. I took a shower and then I got right back in it. All right, so approximately 23 hours a day, basically. Yes. The only difference I do now is I don't wear the LiPo 360 board. I wear a cincher and the belt, and my waist degrade. All right. Okay. Um, tell us a little bit about your your experience at Pure, like from before, you know, before surgery, then uh, kind of pre-op surgery day and, and things like that. Okay, so with me... And this is something everybody asked me. How did I like you guys, professionals? And I think it was awesome. Yeah, professionalism was awesome. For one, my flight was delayed by seven hours. And I believe it was Andrea who helped me out. She told me um, to just come early in the morning, which was the day of my surgery, to do my pre-op. And she said, I'll get my medication, and then I'll come back and do my surgery. And this is one thing that I always state to everyone. The one difference that I know from my, my um, time versus other surgery systems that I communicate with daily is that when they go for surgery, they tell you get there at nine or 10, but they're not being seen for six, seven hours. I stand by my surgery time was 2.30 and I was on the table by 2.32. It was on time. It was no wait. If, if it was a wait, it was probably because I held him up because that's when he was marking me up. It did not take like forever to see him. Actually, everything ran very smoothly. Great. Um, they do send you your labs and everything. And then that was very easy. Like any troubles I had going along the way, Someone was like helping me within 24 hours, but really six hours on the portal. So you guys definitely moved good. Y'all contacted me the next day to make sure I was fine. Y'all did y'all follow up um, call before my six weeks. 
Um, when I came home, I had I had a yeast. Um, you guys sent me all my medication without no problems. <laughs> All right, good, good, good. Um, a lot of people ask, um, how, how do you feel when you're just waking up? When you, you're just waking up from surgery, you're in the recovery room. How was that experience for you? It wasn't rushed. I keep hearing like a lot of girls say like, you know, when I wake up, I'm rushed and I just got to, they try to put us out. Actually, I wasn't rushed. The lady asked me, she was like, um, are you feeling okay? I was like, yeah. She was like, do you want to lay down longer? I was like, no, I just want to get this thing going. and just. So I do say it was not rushed. Um, I didn't get the cold chills that everyone talked about. I didn't get that. But I did cry. All right. I definitely cried. <laughs> All right. Um, and how was the pain factor, you would say? Like, uh, can you describe the pain, say, maybe, like, just waking up from surgery versus the first week versus, you know, how the, how it goes after that? Um, the, for me, I think because I've never experienced real pain, it hit me really hard because I wasn't used to it. I don't have kids, so it wasn't like I had childbirth or anything like that. Right. So um, the, the first week or two was really bad for me, um, like bending, moving, the massages. I hated it. Um, but once I got to week three, everything started to feel normal again. Once I got to, um, one month post-op, I was bending down. I was able to move. I've been driving, by the way, I've been driving since day six post-op. Oh, driving. Okay. Yes. I've been driving since day six post-op. I haven't, I started sitting on my butt without a boppy or a BBL pillow three months. At three months, okay. So you were driving initially, but you, you had your BBL pillow, correct? I actually took like a house pillow and I rolled it up like this and then I used a string to keep it tight so it was more comfortable because the blue brick ones, they yeah. make my legs go numb. So I used this for the comfort and for the leverage of being able to sit and I messed my butt up. All right, excellent. And and then how did you um how were you positioned for the flight home? I will say <laughs> I flew first class going home. And to me, it was awesome because I'm such a big baby as is. So with the first class, I was able to lay straight on my stomach the whole flight. By the time I woke up, I was in New York City. So Okay. For me, first class was definitely it. I didn't have to kneel down or anything like that. All right, good, good. What was the whole experience? How was like the whole experience? You know, going through the airport, going through security. Um, I have wheelchair um, assistance, which I would say every doll should get that. It's free and it's easy. They wheel you through. You don't have to wait through anything. I will say, don't put your ab board. Um, put your ab board on after you get through TSA, right. because that would be a problem. They would end up having to strip strip you and take off all your fahas and stuff, and you don't want to do that. Um, and yes, I only had one round, guys. Um, he definitely achieved this look in one round. Um, my BMI was a 26, so I was on the low side. I take all this off so y'all can actually see. Sorry, I, I get used to this compression thing sometimes. <laughs> how, how long are you wearing the compression now that you're, you're close to five months? I still wear it pretty much um, the cincture and the waist belt. I wear probably 20 hours a day. Okay, so you're still a fair amount. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I have good. gained a lot of weight okay. since you guys have seen me because quarantine is making me eat. <laughs> So um, I have gained a lot of weight. My, before, when you guys was like, oh, my God, I love your body, I had a four-pack. And, yes, when I got off the table, I had a four-pack. It was defined, four-pack, off the table. <laughs> now it just looks more natural, I think. It's not as, like, it, it gives it, like, a natural kind of thing, but it still gives me, like, I had no butt, guys. My hips before was a... Th uh, God, I think I was like a 37. My hips now is a 46 and a half. And I haven't lost no volume on my hips or anything. My waist is a 28. 
and that's if I'm drinking. If I'm not drinking, I can get it to a 27. All right. Uh, actually, could, yeah, can you speak about that a little bit? Um, in did, did you go, because, you know, many, many patients, they go through uh, an area where things are kind of swollen, and they, they go through a low point, and then they go through a fluff phase. Is, is, did that happen with you, or, or how would you describe that? Um, what I will say is, Trust the process, one. What I will say is, two, not, okay, if me and you weigh the same, we're the same height, we weigh the same, same BMI, we can go on the table and I may not come out like you and you won't come out like me because that's genetics. So I think dolls need to be more realistic. Um, for me, I went in very realistic. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> did, did you go through stages? Oh, like, yes. Did you go through a swelling stage, and then did, it, did, it, did things go down, and then they, then they fluff back up? I, I definitely went through the, the crying stage where I'm like, I fell in love with my swollen look, which I think you doctors should tell us don't do that. <laughs> because we see all that big butt, and we're like, oh, my God. So I fell in love with the swollen look. Um, and then that started to go down. And um, then it was times where I would look at my body and I'd be like, oh, this is too pudgy or my butt look like it's going down, but it's really a mind thing. All you have to do is get back in something you tried on already and then you'll realize everything's the same or just measure yourself, everything's the same. Um, it do fluctuate. I don't know if I hit my fluff stage yet. I hope I did because I don't want my butt to get any bigger. Right, yeah. Um. So that's what I would say. I would say trust the process. And sometimes you may get swollen. Like, it's times, like, if I don't wear no compression for two days, I would get swollen. Like, right here will swell up a lot. Okay. And then I just put the compression on, and after, like, an hour or two, everything's back to normal. And for the swelling, I would say drink lots of water. And if you can, boil pineapple skin. And for the flavor, add some cinnamon. And it's good for the, like, I promise you, you could be swollen like this. And in the morning, you will be back like this with just pineapple skin. That's great. Well, that's a, that's a great tip there. Um, as, as I always said, you know, hydration is very, very important, um, especially, especially at the beginning. You know, you want to be drinking your one to two gallons of fluid a day. Um, and it's important not just because you feel weak at the beginning and everything else, but it is important for help for the skin and helping the skin drape back as well as possible and, for, and it helps with the swelling and everything else and yes adding pineapple or drinking pineapple juice or taking bromelain uh which is that's what you know that's all related that helps that helps a lot as well um as for the butt because i'm into the stages as for the um bbl at first it is kind of it is hard it's like stiff because you know that's fat that's injected so it has to settle um mm -hmm. By like three weeks, you'll start feeling it like get soft. I realized mine got softer at the top first, then it got softer at the bottom, and the middle took the longest to get soft. But don't panic, it gets soft, <laughs> guys. All right, good. Um, tell us um, a little bit about massage. Um, you know, how many you've got? Um, you know, did they, 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 they use other any other techniques other than just their hands? Like, you know, cavitation ultrasound or anything else just a little bit about your experience with massage after surgery um i did have 29 massages right. with uh the real spa i do still have more packages so once they open i'll continue um i did do i didn't want to do wood therapy yet because i'm a crybaby so they did um aggressive um massages uh, they did use cavitation um, they did put me in a, um, a thermal bag for my um, just for around the waist. Um, that that was about it. But I will continue my massages once the state open back up. Okay. Because I do think it helps. Yeah, great. So so those are very good points. So you know, I, like I always say, you know, the the minimum. The absolute minimum of, of massages is 10, but really, you know, honestly, you know, for great results, um, you know, 20 is not unusual. And like you said, you had 29. 
already and, and you're and you're thinking about maintaining that and really you know a lot of it has to do with the maintenance after surgery so yeah massage compression taking care of yourself being hydrated um all those things are are incredibly important uh, as well um do you have any any you know now that you're about five months out do you still have any like uh odd sensations like sometimes like a burning or shooting pain or or things like that I don't, um, not really. My sides used to like burn, but not really, no more. I do wish someone would have warned me and told me about those. It's like the nerves, with the nerves in your back trying to reconnect. Uh -huh. You get those sharp tingles like in your back when you get up, but it's the side after like a minute, but it just feels so, ugh. But it didn't stop for me till um, month four. All right. Did you have to take a lot of the pain medication at the, uh, the, the beginning, the Percocet? I took three. Okay. I took three, and my massage therapist told me to stop taking them because she said it um, it increases the itching. Yes, that's true. Well, yeah, for certain patients, certainly um, they can they can have increased itching with with narcotics uh, for sure. Yeah. All right. Good. Okay. Um, Let's see some some of the questions. Have you you have any questions that came up there? Yes, one question which come, came up a few times was, "What was the patient's BMI before you started?" Yeah, um, I think she mentioned it, but go ahead. Yeah. My BMI was a twenty six. I weighed before I spoke with you and did the virtual consult. I weighed one thirty. You told me to gain a little weight, and I gained thirty three pounds. And no, I gained 36 pounds. And then I came when I did my surgery, I was 166.6 pounds. After surgery, I was 170, and now I'm 173. All right, a little quarantine. <laughs> yeah, I gotta slow down. <laughs> All right, excellent. How are the scars healing? All right, so yeah, questions about the scars. Um, Kind of, you know, the placement and how they're healing. How, how are the scars doing for you? Um, they're doing really good. Um, well, on my live, when I go live, I be I show my panties. Do you mind if I show my panties? Uh, no, I, I think that's. I don't. Okay. I don't think. Okay, I don't think it should get you kicked off. Or anything. <laughs> okay, so, um, right here is one incision. Another one is right here. And then I have one in there, but you can't really see it. Um, I think it's healing really good. Um, I did put scar away for maybe um, two or three times. Not really. But then I stopped. Um, my foot. I don't know if y'all can really see it. But it's it, it, this was the worst one, my back one. I don't know if y'all can see it. It had keloid a little bit, but then it went away. Okay. So the, I think it did really good. And also, I had purchased the Circulate machine from Dr. Earl. Oh, yeah. And it was wonders. It worked wonders. I had times where I woke up, my blood felt like it wasn't really circulating how it was supposed to or it just was just really swollen and I put that bad boy on perfect great yeah so yeah so just to explain that so the the circulate is um it's basically a sequential compression device that, that you put in your leg similar to the one that we use while the patients are under anesthesia in the operating room um and it helps you know keep the circulation going in, in the lower legs and the calf area uh, and, and, you know, not only does it help a little bit with swelling, but really the most important part of it is that, at, you know, in maintaining that, um, you know, there's much less risk of what we call DVTs or clots, deep vein thrombosis, which can then become a, a clot in the lung. So it's great to use after surgery. And it's definitely great to use for, for anyone who has a longer flight, uh, a flight over three hours. Uh, definitely uh, highly, highly recommended. Or it's almost pretty much mandatory for anyone with a flight over three hours uh, as well. All right, so uh, you're, you're using the scar away cream. Uh, I think the scars are doing really, really well. I also want to let everyone know that the lifetime of a scar is about a year to so about 12 months. So you really have that first year to really work with the scars, try to get them uh, to be as smooth 
um, as possible. Um, and, uh, you know, something like Scarway can help, something like Silogen or silicone based cream can help. Uh, and then, uh, and then of course, if anyone who has a tendon, more of a tendency to keloid or hypertrophic scars, or they feel their scars are getting raised, then, then sometimes they can consider a steroid injection, a catalog, um, and that, and that can help the scars as well. All right. All right, uh, we have another question from the, from the ladies. How many days passed until she felt like she didn't need to take any more pain meds? Uh, okay, so, it, well, you said you only took three Percocets, is that correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So probably within the first 48 hours, you were, you were on to something else, is that, would you say that's accurate? Uh, I took a lot of uh, Tylenol, eight-hour muscle extra strength. Okay. That worked for me better than the oxycodone i felt like it was stronger and it took the pain away more so i used that mostly i didn't want to get like too hooked on to the um oxy so i just stuck with the palm and that worked really well perfect perfect uh, and it says there how long were you numb did you experience numbness like in the in the maybe like the lower belly area that's a common area sometimes or sometimes along the sides did you did you have numbness initially there I did, and that was probably for like two weeks. For about two weeks. Oh. Two weeks. I used uh, BioFreeze. All right. Perfect. Um, let's see. What else do we have on there? Where did she get the Circulate machine? What? Well, okay. You got the Circulate? You got it here from us? I got it from you guys at the office. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we have that available here. Um, I know we've had some ladies um, kind of look it up on like eBay or stuff like that. Um, if you, but we do definitely have it available here um, as well. And like I said, um, anyone who has a flight over three hours, they should, they should have that um, so that they're safe on the flight back home um, as well. All right. Um, okay, what else? Did we answer all the ones from the, from the beginning? Uh, um, <laughs> let me see. Um... One thing you wish you would have done before or after surgery. Yeah. Um, push-ups. Push-ups? Yeah. Yeah. You definitely need your arms after oh. surgery. It's hard to push yourself up and to, like, get up because it's, like, everything's just weighing down on you. So I definitely would have done push-ups. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So... Because you, know, you are going, you know, you're going from basically laying on your on your belly, uh, and you have to go from that position to standing um, without really sitting. So, so that makes sense. You know, at the beginning, you want to be sure that you can do that. Um, how about weakness? Like, did you feel weak? Uh, maybe first, you know, day one or day two, where you feel like lightheaded or weak or anything like that. Um, the first two three days, I stayed in the bed. I couldn't really move. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I started to move around, and because um, I stayed at a recovery house, which, by the way, I know Dr. Earl don't promote recovery houses or recommend them, but I stayed at my little concierge service, and they were awesome, awesome. All right. So everyone say, why did I pick Earl? It was because his technique, he's very safe. Like, that was the one thing for me. I, re I lost deposits on plenty of doctors from Columbia to DR to Miami till I settled on Earl because he was the safest one out of every doctor. And, right. like a commercial, they don't take a lot of dolls. So you don't have to feel like you're, like, in a, um, a chop shop or anything. It's not like that. Promise you. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Well, th well, no, thank you for that. We really appreciate it. And yes, yeah, so, you know, safety is definitely one of, you know, our top concerns. Um, you know, you know, we use the ultrasound to make sure that, that the fat's in the correct location. Um, the OR is JCO certified. Um, we are not, we're not doing eight or 10 or any kind of ridiculous number of cases a day. Um, we try to, you know, limit things to, to, you know, five case max here. Uh, and try to just give each, you know, all the patients, you know, all the attention that they need. Um, and it's true, yeah, we're not affiliated with a recovery hospital. Nice little shout out there to, to uh, my little concierge. So that's great. You had a good experience with them. Yeah, they were very awesome. And 
mind you, I'm not just saying that because they don't pay me or anything, but I did leave another recovery house prior to staying at my little concierge service. So it's all about, you got to think when you're picking a recovery house, you want to find something that's very clean, that the staff make sure they're washing all your stuff and they're not doing it, washing it, contaminating it with other people's um, fire house and stuff like that. Um, at this recovery house, they cleaned literally every four hours. The bathroom was getting cleaned four times a day. You got four meals plus snacks. And it wasn't just whatever they wanted to feed you. Whatever you asked for, that's what they made you. And yeah, it was great. Awesome. Great, great. I just saw a couple of questions about uh, hemoglobin levels. Um, did you have any issues with your hemoglobin level? Did you do your iron supplementation beforehand? Okay, I will say this. <laughs> I didn't do my iron. Oh, I didn't, no, I didn't take anything before surgery. Nothing, because I don't take vitamins now, and my hemo um, was a 12.9. Um, at the recovery house, my hemo, I believe, was a 8 point something. But after she gave me iron and beet juice, my hemo was back to normal within two days. So I didn't really, so I'm sorry, guys. I don't know about the vitamins. <laughs> All right. So, so that's great. I mean, at least you started at, at a very good baseline level. Yeah, our typical recommendation is that you start doing your vitamin C, your folic acid, and your iron supplements, uh, typically Hemoplex and or Chloridex are the two ones that we recommend. You want to do that, you want to start that at least 30 days before surgery. Uh, we just want to make sure that your iron levels are, are adequate for surgery. Um, you know, she, she had adequate levels because she was above 12. Um, and above 12, you know, you're certainly doing well. If you're between 11 and 12, the cell saver does become mandatory. Um, you had the cell saver, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the cell saver is very, very helpful. Um, it really makes the recovery uh, a bit easier. You, you, you know, there's less overall blood loss. You feel better, uh, a bit stronger uh, than you would otherwise. Yeah. Okay, just for the person who put this in the comments, this is not a veteran discount. I'm not getting paid whatsoever to be talking to you guys. I'm just, it's quarantine, and I'm hanging out with my doctor, and not getting paid. I'm not told to say any of this. This is literally just me being me. This is my results. This is, I didn't pay a discount. I'm not a veteran. I've only had one round. I told Dr. Earl I wanted to be one and done, and he gave me a one and done. Um, I asked for a bubble slope, and I wanted to be sucked dry, and he accomplished. And for all you dogs out there, stop saying I got a Zobax butt. This is a Dr. Earl's butt. Maybe <laughs> we trying to take credit for your work, Doc. No, no, no. <laughs> all right. No, it's true. And we really appreciate you coming on, actually. Uh, you know, we, we got a lot of feedback from, from the groups and stuff that they wanted, you know, patients to come on, on the live and, and describe their experiences. So we really appreciate that, uh, uh, that you're willing to come and talk to, uh, you know, to everybody about your experience here today. Um, and yeah, you know, you know, we, we just kind of, you know, asked and, and, and kind of threw it together, you know, fairly quickly. And uh, this is turning out great. We really, really oh, appreciate it. Sorry. Yeah. Um, sorry, guys. The dress is kind of, now this is something too. So the dress is tight down by my butt, but by my waist, because my waist is small, it's kind of baggy. So y'all can just use your, like, imagination, I guess. <laughs> but this right. is me. Um, I did tell him I did not want to be stuffed to capacity. I wanted to look natural, but still have, like, a nice little slope, and he gave me that. And also, he recommended I get hips because he said, listen, for what I'm about to do for you, you need some hips, and my hips been rocking. That's right. Yeah, and, and fortunately, you know, for you, you did very well with the hips. You didn't lose a lot of hips. I think some of that is probably maybe attributable to the fact that, that you used the ace band and you had, like, zero pressure on the hips, uh, you know, from early on. I think that definitely helps. Of course, every patient can be a little bit different. You know, some patients may lose more in the hips than others. Um, and that's, unfortunately, you know, that's just the way things work out sometimes. But I think being very, very careful, not applying, you know, minimum to no pressure to the area uh, is definitely, you know, definitely going to give you a better 
chance uh, of, of more fat in the hips to survive. Mm -hmm. As for the question for how much is a BBL, I don't know. And I think every patient is different. So you would have to get your consultation and I believe someone will give you a quote. That's right. So, uh, yes, that's right. We're not, we, we're not, gonna, you know, if you want to get a quote from you, just, you, you let us know. You can DM, you can go through the website, um, and, and then we'll be more than happy to, to help you uh, with all that. All right. Um, all right. That's awesome. I think we got most of the questions from, the, from before, right? The ones that we had at the beginning. I think we answered all of those. Um, oh, work, work. There was one about work. How were you able to get back to work fairly quickly? Uh, well, for me, though, because I am married and my husband works, um, I was able to take off. So I took off the two to, well, actually three months. So that's how I recovered. I was able to be able to lay on my stomach. I laid on my stomach for six weeks. Then I started sitting on my boppy to watch television, uh, like seven weeks. Then I started sitting on my butt, butt three months. Um, I still don't sleep on my side, and I don't, um, I don't sleep on my side, and I don't sleep on my back. Right. I'm just paranoid. I, I just feel like. <laughs> You know, I waited this long not sleeping on it. It'll be fine. I do exercise. Um, I just started okay. three, three days ago, so not that not that very hard. Um, the, I did start before, but the gym's closed, so I just started in my house because I've been eating a lot from ice cream to chips to candy to everything that's bad for you. And I just want to tell you, dolls, liposuction – is not the cheat code to eat whatever you want because you would gain the weight back. So yeah. if you really wanted the surgery to love what you have, just, you know, be militant and just try to stick to it and just have a cheat day once a week if you can, but you don't want to gain the weight back just because you can't control yourself. So right. let's have control because look at me. I had a four pack and it <laughs> disappeared on me. <laughs> That's right. Well, that's a very good point. You definitely want to, you know, maintain, maintain your results. You want to maintain it as long as you, as you can. And for that, you want to, you know, maintain a healthy diet. You do want to, you know, kind of do an, a bit of exercise as well. Um, and, you know, some patients, you know, sometimes, or not patients, but people say, you know, well, if I wanted, you know, if I was going to do diet and exercise and I would have never had surgery. And I don't think that's the right way to think of it. I think if you put everything together, that's when you're really going to have like truly fantastic, mm -hmm. yeah, fantastic long-term results. So, so you got to do everything. Yes, you have the surgery, uh, and then you recover. But after you recover, you have to get back on that healthy diet and the exercise program to really, you know, maintain those results for a long, long time. Um, and that's and that's really the best thing that you can do for yourself. That's the key because <laughs> every six out of ten dogs who get surgery, they gain the weight back within a year. Right. Yeah. And you, and you definitely, yeah, you definitely don't want to do that. You want to, you've gone through a lot, right? It's a lot. It's a lot financially. It's a lot mentally. It's a lot physically. Um, so, you know, in order to really maintain that, uh, you know, do your diet, do your exercise. And then, you know, that can last years and years and years. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so that's what I plan to do, guys, because I'm a one and done doll. I'm not doing that. Yet. <laughs> the pain is crucial. I can't take it, but I will recommend it because I feel awesome. Um, for the people who husbands may not be as um, on board with it as we would like, you have a community you can go to for support. And I'm just letting you know because I was one of those dolls or pearls. My husband did not want me to have surgery, but he can't get enough of me now. <laughs> All right. Awesome. All right. Well, I think we've got into pretty much all the questions. I mean, I think this has been great. Um, uh, is there is there anything else you want to say, or you're 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 good? Um, I just want to say thank you to uh, you, the staff, Pure. Everything was fantastic. Everything was clean. Um, <laughs> everything was fantastic. Everything was clean. 
I definitely recommend if you're looking for a safe doctor. Like, ladies, it's not always about the butt. It's not always about the waist. It's about safety, getting home, you know, beating the odds of infections. And, you know, nobody's perfect. Every, you know, we can't say no one's going to ever get an infection or fibrosis. But my doc, check his record. <laughs> because, listen. The buttock shouldn't really be in the buttock. And that makes things difficult. Uh, and that makes things difficult. Uh, for those patients that that you know uh, maybe are, are fairly small and perhaps they do get a combination surgery with the only with the one leader, then, then they have to do they have to get creative in terms of how they sit and they sleep because they, they basically need what, what some people call a zero gravity chair or something of that nature where there's a hole in the chair or it's like a donut so that you kind of you know, sit or you or you or you sleep on that. You're minimizing the pressure in the buttock and the hips, but of course you're not putting pressure on the breast. If you lose fat in your hips, can you get them back? Is is there fluff hips? There is a little bit of fluff for hips, yeah, and certainly, um, you know, the, you, the, the, they're, they're always going to hit a low point, and that low point for most patients, I would say, is somewhere around the five, six, seven week mark, um, and that's that's that, that's just the buttock with the buttock and the hips. Um, and then, and then that tends to then improve, um, you know, with either like a full on fluff phase, um, or just, you know, just getting better. Um, and that, that's more closer to like, you know, yeah, like the three, four or five month mark when you go through that fluff phase. And that can also be at the hip level, um, as well. And we didn't really get into it a lot uh, today, but, um, but I think feeding the fat does work. Um, and, and eating the healthy fats after surgery and making sure that you're certainly not losing weight after surgery. That's, that's the last thing you want to do. You don't want to, you want to maintain a, a nice, you know, amount of calories at the very least maintain your weight. If not, maybe your weight goes up just a little bit, um, after surgery. So, you know, uh, going up five pounds after surgery is actually not, not a bad thing. Um, because that means you're feeding the fat and that's going to give it the best chance to survive. And then, of course, yeah, once you get to three months or so, if you want to lose those five pounds again, then that's okay. Or just maintain it depending on, on you know, whether you're happy how things are looking at that time. All right. Okay, I think, um, I think that was it. So, um, yes, guys, just want to let you know, this is a video. <laughs> this is not a picture. I'm not photoshopped. I'm not doing the one leg, make your butt poke out. This is standing <laughs> straight. This is my result. I am five months. My stomach to my hips ratio is perfect for me. Flat, nothing right there. I used to have a big food bar right here, but it doesn't exist anymore. And, you know, it's soft. It moves. It jiggles. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's great. Well, once again, thank you so much. Uh, this has been great. We hope to do more of these in the future. We'll get maybe some patients for different procedures. So, of course, you know, the BBL is big, so we have to start with that. Uh, and we have to start here with this, you know, beautiful patient, beautiful result, um, and, you know, beautiful pearl, as we like to say. <laughs> so, uh, thank you so much for everything. Um, and everybody, we will see you next week. Uh, remember to tune in. We'll give you the time as, as we get closer. But uh, as you know, every Wednesday is hump day uh, with Dr. Alex Earl. Yes.